Hello everyone. What I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you how to set up your own private VPN server. Now you can do this by getting yourself a cloud server or VPS server, whatever you want to call it. I would recommend DigitalOcean. They're very fast setting up, very easy, they accept PayPal. One of the best services I've found on the internet. Anyway, what I've done, I've already set up a VPS or cloud server and I've got it here on this putty link I can just SSH straight into it. Now I'm SSHing in as root which you're not really supposed to do but it doesn't really matter here because it's only going to be having a VPN server on it, it's not like it's going to have anything important. So this is like I said this has just been set up so there's nothing in it at all it's just a plain Ubuntu 12 installation now I'm using Ubuntu because I like it this should work on other distributions of Linux like CentOS or Red Hat but I mean if you are using another distribution some of the steps here might be slightly different and you'll have to research those but if you're using Ubuntu you should be able to follow this step by step and it should work fine. So first thing to do what I always do anyway is uh, to update the apt-get repository and you can do that simply by typing apt-get space update and we'll just let it do that. Right that's done. Now once you've done that you can then upgrade all the outdated packages that are already on here because obviously these VPS hosts they use images and the images aren't always going to be up to date so to do that is pretty simple it's just apt.get upgrade and then say yes and now it'll just go through all the outdated packages on this particular image and update them to the latest versions. Alright, so that's that done. What I do here, I'm not sure if you really need to, but I do it anyway, is just to reboot the system. Now these VPSs from uh, DigitalOcean restart themselves pretty quick see it's already restarted so that's now all done all nice and updated to the latest packages now what I'm going to do is put a control panel on there you don't have to do this but I do it because it's convenient if I want to use it for something else and it also sets up all the firewall in its basic configuration which saves me a job so you can see here I'm at the webmin site this is the control panel I prefer and I'm at the Debian distribution installation instructions because Ubuntu is basically a Debian distribution anything that works on Debian, Debian will usually work on Ubuntu so you can see here I've got the two commands to install and get Debian running so let's copy paste that into the SSH there and just download it. Okay, that's downloaded. There it is. Now, to install this, you just put that command in there. Now, it won't install because there'll be missing dependencies, but I'll tell you what to do later. So just put that in for now. And it's going to complain at you that uh, there are missing dependencies. Yep, see, to get around that, just type apt get install dash f, and that will then install all these missing packages that Webmin requires, and then go on to install Webmin afterwards. And say yes, and there you see it's setting up web, Webmin now. <coughs> Sorry about that, got a bit of a frog in my throat. Okay, done. 
webmin's now set up so we should be able to log into it so there you can see I'm now at the webmin login I'm just going to log in as root and just use your root password that you were given when the okay so webmin's set up so if you now go into networking and Linux firewall you see this allow all traffic and enable firewall at boot time and just set up firewall and that's it so you need to do there for now okay next thing you need to do is just set up a few bits and bobs to install the VPN server it's called PPTPD which actually stands for point to point tunneling protocol daemon so the first thing we need to do is to install the pptpd package so we can do that by apt-get I'm not using sudo here because I'm logged in as root so. so install and it's simply pptpd okay that's installed it simple as that right now we've got to edit a few files now I use nano you can use vim or whatever emacs or whatever text editor you like and we're editing etc pptpd dot config sorry dot com not config and this is the default configuration file as it's installed we're just going to need to add a few things to this so I'm just going to uncomment these and change them now you don't really want that because that tend to, tends to be used by some routers you don't want an IP conflict on your system so you need to change it to some subnet that you don't use on your local system I'm going to use 200 now your remote IP this is the range of IPs that will be assigned to connecting clients so you need it in the same sort of range and then we've got 200 and then 100 to 199 doesn't really matter what you put there as long as it's in within that subnet there and if there's only you connecting to it you're only going to need one IP but I just like to put a few in there got 100 IPs to to choose from there so that's not a problem so we can save that alright next we need to edit the options file so nano and the options file is located in etc ppp pptpd dot options or maybe it's not have I done something wrong here oh it's dash options not dot options <laughs> that's better okay we need to add a few bits and bobs to this so can we see how we've got MS wins here yeah just uncomment those and I'm going to add 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4 .4. they're basically Google's public DNS servers they're usually always available so not much of a problem okay now at the bottom here you can see this no BSD com okay we're just going to add a couple more lines in here and that is no IPX now we need to set the maximum transfer unit now the reason you have to do this is because PPTP is a rather finicky protocol and if you don't clamp the MTU to the same as the incoming client it won't work properly so if you want to find out what your MT, MTU actually is if you look usually you'll be connecting to the internet through a router or a modem and somewhere in that modem this is mine basically and you can see there my MTU is 1490 so you need the same MTU now I don't know about your routers or modems but the information should be in the in the configuration 
of the modem somewhere you just got to search and find it so we need the same MTU as that and then we can save that okay that's that part done right now we need to add some users now the user file is in etc ppp chap dash secrets and we're going to add a user to this, this is what you're going to use to log in so I'm going to use the username Steve I mean what you put is obviously up to you then we do a tab then a star and a tab then a password abc12345 that'll do then star and a tab and a tab then a star okay I always put a new line at the end just to make sure save that file so that's PPTPD set up now you try saying that really quickly it's not easy alright so we need to restart the PPTPD server uh, we do that by etc inet init dot d forward slash pptpd restart there we go so that's all done okay we need to although now it's set up we could log into it all we can access is that machine we can't actually get out through to the internet we need to do a few extra things to set that up so in order to do that we need to enable something called port forwarding edit and that's etc sys ctl dot conf and here somewhere you should see this line net ipv4 ip forward if you can't see it just add it you can see there that it's commented out just uncomment it and then that will enable packet forwarding save that file now this time I'll reboot the server again okay and we're in so now I'm just going to type iw.config <laughs> didn't work is it ip config no if config yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and it was one of those. Uh, yeah, you can see that the network port is called ETH0. That's what it's usually called on sort of 99% of all installations, so it's just best to check. So now we're going to add a few um, IP tables rules. Now the IP tables rules we need to add, we can add them with just IP tables. I don't need to use sudo again because I'm in as root. So it's IP tables dash T NAT dash A capital A for add post routing command and that's on the interface ETH0 or whatever this says on yours and more than likely it's going to be ETH0 dash J and masquerade. Never remember how to spell this. U E R-A-D-E, yeah that looks right, yep add that rule, then we need to add another rule, IP tables dash capital I forward dash P TCP dash dash TCP dash flags S-Y-N comma R-S-T, sorry about that, S-Y-N dash J TCP MSS and dash dash clamp dash MSS dash two dash PMTU and those are the two IP tables entries that need to be adding. Now what we need to do now is to save those rules so that they're always applied this is where webmin came in because webmin set up the initial um, IP tables rules and these should be in etc IP 
p tables up dot rules. We say those are the default rules. Now these are the ones that are loaded in when the system boots up. So what we can do is we can save over those and to do that we can say IP tables dash save and we're saving to etc IP tables up dot rules like that. And now if we look inside that file now we can see that our entries have been added to that startup file. And that's it. Your server should now be set up for um, VPN access. So let's give it a try, shall we? Okay, so I'm going to open my network properties now. Now this may be different on different versions of Windows. I'm using Windows 8, but it's going to be similar on different versions of Windows. Basically what you want to find is set up a new connection or network it'll say something like VPN connection or something on it and we're connecting to a workplace it's very important so we're using my internet connection so we're using a VPN connection now the internet address is the internet address of your server your VPS that you set up and we're just going to call this my VPN. Call it anything you want. It's just what it gets called in the in the network connections. Remember, connections allow other people may as well. Okay. So you can see here that I've got my VPN in my networks. So I can just simply connect to that now. And it's Steve and use my password that I set up before which is ABC12345 ok ok so we're now connected but it's not completely finished yet so I'm going to go into the adapter settings you can see with where my VPN is go into properties there and networking we can see we've got that and with DNS servers we want to do the same thing 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4 ok we'll have to disconnect that just uh, disconnect my VPN <clears throat> All right, so connect. And now you can see it's connected. So we'll just open a browser, and we've gone to what's my IP dot org, and as you can see, it's reporting that my IP address is the same. So that's worked. We're now connected through the VPS that we've set up. And this will allow you to bypass all your ISPs, monitoring systems, web cache. It will more than likely bypass any throttling, peer to peer throttling, mainly because everything that you're doing is being sent along one tunnel channel. So it's only one connection and ISPs don't generally t uh, throttle single connections peer-to-peer -peer usually makes lots and lots and lots of connections so that's when they can tell that you're doing it but when you're doing it like this completely different okay hope that helped some of you and I'll see you soon bye